Friends, Jimmy LaRose here with John Curtis, and welcome back to The Fundraising Farmer. You know, it's individuals, people, volunteers, donors, staff, executives, board members, the group of individuals that actually load bear on behalf of the organizations that we serve, these are the individuals that actually carry out all the different systems and processes and initiatives that make sure a nonprofit succeeds in advancing its mission. Well, since we're talking about people, what kind of culture must the administration provide or create, the milieu, the space within which people operate, so all these different groups of individuals can actually succeed? Are you battling a traditional culture or are you putting in place a trusting culture? I have with me today here, John Curtis. He's transformed my life. He's affected our companies and affected nonprofits around the world in that he's committed to organizational development. And so much of OD is actually putting in place all that infrastructure that allows for the right culture. John, what's the difference between a trusting culture and a traditional culture? Why don't we start with traditional culture? Well, it's great the way you set that up, Jimmy, because you talked about battling the culture, and that's exactly what happens in a traditional culture. There's a command and control structure, there's power, there's uh, coercion, there's fear, there's manipulation, uh, and everybody wants to hold back because they're fearful, they're vulnerable, they don't want to say what they really think or feel because they know they're going to get attacked. Uh, it feels dangerous oftentimes in that kind of culture, and uh, kind of the bottom line is what you get out of that sort of culture, Jimmy, is people who do just enough not to get fired. Wow. Well, in order for us to advance our mission, if we've created a culture where people are just trying to stay underneath the radar screen enough not to get in trouble, and somehow that means they're involved in a, a modicum of doing some things right and some things wrong, it doesn't sound like to me that that's the culture that's going to now allow people to actually realize their personal goals and dreams or the nonprofits. Exactly. Now keep in mind a culture is just how does it feel to work here. So imagine the difference between working in a, in a fearful structure and an environment where you, you really worry about even opening your mouth and saying anything versus a trusting culture. Now in a trusting culture what you have is openness and honesty. Nobody's trying to control anybody. We're working together as mature adults. It is the 21st century and in particular for younger staff members and board members and volunteers it's very critical to treat them with that sense of openness and authenticity. What you end up getting out of that kind of culture is people that give extra discretionary emotional labor. They go above and beyond the call of duty to do what's necessary in service delivery, uh, in operating the nonprofit, or in particular in raising those dollars that you need to be successful. So that's essentially the difference between a traditional fear-inducing kind of culture and a motivating, trusting culture. That's what people look for and that's what they want to work for. You know, if you think in terms of simply, as John just said, what does it feel like to work in this particular environment? Boy, you know, I've been involved in fundraising campaigns where it just felt great, where it was exciting, and we couldn't wait to get together to explore our next win. I've also been involved in cultures around fundraising where the glass was half empty, and we were believing the worst about the situation, and we weren't going to be able to achieve goal. So, John, I do think the, uh, the way our viewers can actually get connected to this concept is, what does it feel like? Exactly. And, and just one of those things that, just like going to a foreign land where the different culture is quite obvious, the music, the dress, the language, obviously, all the customs. Well, in a culture, it's one of those things of how do we operate around here? And culture is very powerful. It's invisible, which makes it unique in an organization. But if you ask any employee who's worked there for a while, a volunteer or board member, how does it feel to work here? They'll tell you. They'll begin to describe what will be either a traditional, in most cases, or a trusting culture just by the words they use to tell you about what it's like to work there, how it feels to be there. That's the most important key for anybody in a leadership role is to advance the culture from a traditional to a trusting one. That's the most critical step you can do in leading an organization. So when's the last time you sat down with all your key donors, all your key volunteers, all your staff, all your administrators, and simply ask the question, what does it feel like to work here? I can't wait to find out what you find out when you do it. I'm Jimmy LaRose. Thanks for spending time with us here on The Fundraising Farmer.